What's happening, y'all? Like my t-shirt? I just, I just wanted to show off my t-shirt real quick. <laughs> First, I wanna say thank you to everybody who's been leaving comments. I apologize if I haven't been getting back to you as quickly as uh, I would like to. I know I'm on YouTube every day, clearly because I'm uploading these videos, but I also have life to deal with. <laughs> So I'm not always able to jump into the comments and reply right away, but I do see the comments. I do appreciate them. Thank you for hollering at me. I will respond. Trust me on that. I will get back to you. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm hopping back into writing. I'm gonna be doing what I call the Gallagher Screenwriting Challenge, where I'll be writing a script a month for the entire year next year. I did reach out to the challenge's inspiration, Mr. Brian Gallagher, let him know what I was doing, what my plans were, uh, sent him a link to the video. He was flattered, he said thank you, and he also offered uh, some words of encouragement and advice where he says it was really just discipline and routine. And that's kind of what I touched on when I mentioned using the Zero Draft 30 method of writing four pages a day. Well, that's the routine. And getting your ass in the chair to write, that's the discipline. So that's what I'm planning on doing. And since I'm going to undertake this massive, ambitious endeavor, I decided to go back and read a few books that I found helpful when I was trying to get a foothold in this whole screenwriting thing. And these are books that if you are an aspiring screenwriter, you should probably take a look at. Before I get into the books, I do wanna say I hate that phrase, aspiring screenwriter. I hate the word aspiring. If you're doing something, whether you're a screenwriter, a writer writer, <laughs> a filmmaker, I mean anything, don't say that you're aspiring. Unless you're just sitting on your ass thinking about it, all right, th then you're aspiring. But if you are actually doing it, if you're sitting down putting words to paper, or you're going out and you're filming, or whatever it is that you wanna do, if you are actually taking steps in order to make that happen, if you're actually like diving into that vocation and you're doing it, you're not aspiring. That's what you are. You're a writer, you're a filmmaker, you're a fashion designer, you're, I don't know, <laughs> whatever it is. But don't limit yourself to aspiring. Just want to say that. Now the first book on my list is Stephen King's On Writing. I think it's a classic. It's one of Stephen King's best books ever. <laughs> it is, I would say, a hybrid of memoir and kind of like how-to. You know, he talks about his career, you know, how he got started and his inspirations and everything like that. But he also talks about, you know, uh, tools, techniques that he uses in his writing. So this is a great book. It doesn't matter if you're into screenwriting or just writing in general. Stephen King's On Writing is a must read. Number two. William Goldman's Adventures in the Screen Trade. Yet another classic if you are endeavoring to become a screenwriter. It's in this book that William Goldman, who was the writer of such classics as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Princess Bride, Misery, an adaptation of Stephen King. It's in this book that he coined the phrase, nobody knows anything. And it's true, nobody knows anything. If, if you know, people knew what to write, what the industry would want, what people would go see, I don't know. This business would probably be a lot easier, but also a lot less interesting. But Adventures in the Screen Trade, again, is a must read. Even though it's a bit older, it still gives you an idea as to what it's like to be a screenwriter working in Hollywood, trying to navigate, you know, those waters and the frustrations that come along with that, even for an A-list screenwriter. Number three, Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. A lot of people aren't fans, I'll say, of Save the Cat because they feel that Save the Cat introduced a formula into screenwriting. But see, I don't think that that's true. I think that Save the Cat just kind of revealed what the, what the formula was, but it's a formula that's been in existence since the days of like Greek drama. I mean, the things that Blake Snyder points out in this book and the kind of structure that he presents something that's been around, it's been a part of storytelling since forever. I like Save the Cat because when I was getting back into writing, I happened to just find it like at a stoop sale in Brooklyn and I'd heard about it before. So I picked it up for maybe like a dollar. <laughs> and in reading it, it perfectly mapped out how your story should go. Whether you like it or not, these elements are in practically every story. I'm not saying that you have to 
be a slave to save the cat and follow it to the letter or the page number as it were, but it gives you something to think about. You know, these are elements you should keep in mind. These are genre points that you should you should think be thinking about when you're writing your script. So that's why I highly recommend Save the Cat. And there's a whole volume of books that have come after the original Save the Cat, but I'm definitely a fan of the first one. So pick it up if you are serious about screenwriting. Number four, The Secrets of Action Screenwriting by William Martell. Now this book is out of print, but you can still get it for like Kindle or something like that. Now what I love about this book is that even though it's geared toward action screenwriting, a lot of the lessons that are taught can be applied to any genre of writing. You know, Martell talks about things like Popeye points and rug pulls and you get into the book and you find out what those are, but again, you know, they're applicable. It doesn't matter whether you're writing the next Fast and Furious movie or you're writing the next Merchant Ivory drama. As I mentioned before, the physical copy is out of print, but you can get this for like your Kindle or whatever. And another beautiful thing is that William has continued to write books in what he calls the Blue Book series. You can get those as physical versions or you can, you know, download them for your Kindle or whatever as well. Number five, A Screenwriter's Journey to Success by Mark Sanderson. Mark is a working screenwriter. I've had the pleasure of meeting him. He's a great guy, wonderful guy. What I love about this book is that, like Goldman's book, it gives you an understanding of what it's like to be a working screenwriter in the industry. Mark has written, I think, like 35 screenplays, and more than half of them have been like produced into feature films and TV movies. You know, he's a guy that knows what he's talking about. And if you really take the lessons, the advice that he that he presents in this book to heart, then you'll have an understanding as to what it's like to work in this industry. And also, it gives you an idea as to how to kind of measure your expectations. You know, I think that everyone thinks that a screenwriter immediately sells screenplays for like a million, two million dollars. I had dreams of selling a script for as much as Shane Black or Joe Esterhaas would. But those days are gone. You gotta measure your expectations and you know, it's like any other career. And that's one of the great things about Mark's book is that he opens your eyes to this so that you can manage your expectations. And again, you know, like Goldman's book, helps you navigate through the world of writing for Hollywood. That's about it. Um, I will leave links to all of these books below. As I said, if you are a screenwriter, you should pick up these books, you should get into them, take what you can away from them, move forward, get into those pages. Speaking of pages, I have shit that I gotta do. So I'm gonna end this video right now.